I was a teacher at a Catholic high school. And when I was teaching at this Catholic high school, I saw three types of students, and I'd like to share that with you. I saw immediately the students that would be going to Harvard, okay? And then I saw the students who would not be going to Harvard. And then I saw the third group, the students who would not be going to Harvard, but the Harvard graduates would be working for them. Whoa. Those are the entrepreneurs. Yeah. <clears throat> so three types of students. There they are, okay? Going to Harvard, not going to Harvard, and the Harvard grads would be working for them. Uh, before I get started, uh, when I was coming in the back, well, uh, never mind. Well, does anybody here have the initials LR? Okay, if, if you do, see me after the class, because on the back one that's coming in, I found your contact lens case. Okay? This is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about generating solutions to problems. We're going to be talking about connections. Look at that. Scholars say that connection that I made between these being initials and between these meaning left and right lens, that connection, they say, is the type of thing that could have saved everybody on the Titanic. Every one of them could have been saved. Remind me, we're going to come back to that. So, I'm a recovering entrepreneur. I've started three companies. My parents were entrepreneurs. My grandparents were entrepreneurs. No one in my family has ever worked for anyone except for me. For two years, I worked with a little, two little companies. I'm not sure if they made it or not. One was called Apple, the other one's called Intel. Oh, yeah. Did they make it? Oh, good. I guess I did my job. <laughs> my grandfather's family is the only ones that worked for somebody. And they worked for this fellow in Russia, in Moscow, in 1917. His name was the Tsar. So my grandfather's family worked for the Tsar. <laughs> the 1970, 1917 model. There were several models. So when the Red Army rolled in in 1970, they killed my entire family. My grandfather escaped through creativity. He stayed one step ahead of the communists. So I barely made it here today. What I want to talk about is generating problems, uh, generating solutions to problems. And on the way over here, I was very impressed. This place is so creative that your address is named, can you say her name? Is, thank you for the Spanish accent, because I can't do that. <laughs> so your address is named after a super creative person. So I knew on my way here, this was going to be a super creative place. By the way, my, my parents' business was growing flowers, and they were artists. Okay. They grew flowers in Ohio, big cash crop. They did not grow pot. <laughs> well, they didn't know they were growing pot. So I have a book coming out. What I'm going to talk about today is based on my book. This book will be out in July. So my publisher thinks. <laughs> Don't tell her I'm here today. I'm supposed to be working on the manuscript. If you join me on LinkedIn, I'm the only Curtis Panasuk. Again, Panasuk is Russian. I'm not a spy <laughs> anymore. <laughs> join me on LinkedIn, and I'm going to try to put out each chapter in a serial fashion starting in March. The reason I'm doing that, by the way, is trying to get creative feedback from people. So when I worked at Apple, I worked with this guy. Do you, do you recognize him? So, he always said this to us. He said, hire smart people to tell us what to do. He was not an egomaniac. He was gifted as an entrepreneur because he knew where he needed help. And he went and got it. Okay? He went and got a guy when he was in the garage, barefoot with long hair and Steve Jobs. 
he went and got the best marketing guy in the world. He found him, but then his talent was he convinced that guy, head of a 500-person multinational agency who I worked for, convinced that guy to come and train Steve in marketing. Now, this is what we're doing today. You are Steve Jobs. You have hired a smart person to tell you what to do. I am the smart person. And I'm also very modest. <laughs> what that means to you is as we're going along, I'm working for you. So if you have a question as we're going along, you ask me. I am working for you today. How many know what an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur looks like? I'll show you one. This is what they look like. Agreed? They are different. They're different than the other people. They're different than the other people for many reasons. Okay? Here's what they do. They're the ones up here on top. Okay? They find a peak. They find a problem. And they build and lead the team up to the peak to solve the problem. That's what entrepreneurs do. That happens to be my daughter, my 20-year-old my 20 badass pilot daughter. OK? It's my beautiful daughter, Katrina. OK? And here she is being creative. She has stuck her selfie stick out the window of her airplane while she's flying. My beautiful daughter, Katrina. Oh, hang on, I got a call. Yes. Yes, Kylie. All right, I'll tell them I have another beautiful daughter <laughs> named Kylie who's also creative. I know the college tuition is due. Did you just say capiche to me? <laughs> Stop trying to be Italian. We are Russian. So I do have another daughter, Kylie. She also flies. She's a dancer. And here's her creative way of looking for her contact lens. Okay? She doesn't know I have a contact lens case. Entrepreneurs, they only do these things. They only do things that make them a little nervous. They only do things that make them a little afraid, and they do things that are fun. If you're not nervous doing something, you shouldn't be doing it, okay? If you got the choice between being a banker and a tightrope walker, go for tightrope walker. You should be a little afraid, okay? This is what entrepreneurs are, and they have fun. This is the entrepreneur's life, the life I've lived for most of my life. Try it, fix it, and do it. I guarantee you're going to fail over and over and over. Yeah. What makes an entrepreneur different is when they fail and fall, they get back up on the horse every time. Don't forget this is the most important message today. Balance your life and your work. Your kids are never more important than your business. There will always be, there, there will always be another customer with a need that needs to be met. You will not have another chance with your kids. That one is one chance only. Is the mic working? No, um, just be a tweaker, just in case. Oh, okay. Tweaker, yeah. I can help you. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs say, but there's so much work to be done. Get creative. Job share. Sell another person to join. Give them part ownership in the company. That's what I did with my companies. I gave ownership to someone else to help me so that I could be home with my kids when it's needed. Thank you. So the notebooks that you have are for this reason. Creative ideas that we're going to generate today, 
They're going to come to you all the time, morning, noon, night, on vacation. Have your notebook with you because when they come, they're whispers. They're gifts from another dimension, your subconscious. And I'm going to teach you how to move those ideas into your conscious mind so you can capture them. So everybody, open your notebooks, turn to the first page. There's a homeless guy back there making a lot of noise in the white jacket. Is there anything? I mean, it's, I can work around it. So that's what these notebooks are for, to capture your ideas that we're going to learn how to, how to generate. This book, The Artist's Way, it sold 4 million copies. Entertainers, comedians, anybody in entertainment generating new ideas uses this book. This book has got one problem. There's too many words. So I'm going to boil it down to, for you. And this is on my web page. I have a collection of creativity books. The point here is this, and this is very powerful. In the morning, afternoon or night, you write a dump of whatever you're thinking for 30 minutes. Oh, you want me to use that? Yeah. Okay. Um, am I projecting enough? Back there? Okay. All right, I'm going to switch to the microphone because I'm not quite loud enough. So the point here, can you hear me? You want, you want to turn it on for me? Testing, one, two, three. Is that better? Great. Thank you for letting me know. Feedback is the breakfast of champions. So what you do is you do a 30-minute mind up of whatever's on your mind. That primes the pump of the creative part of your brain. It's not going to generate great ideas, but they will come to you throughout the day. I used to train nightclub comedians and entertainers in creativity, and they said this works very well. The other thing you need to do for creativity, you need to expose yourself to as much as possible. Go to slam poetry. Go to nightclubs. Vivian, I think it cut out. Is this cut out? It, all right, so it just sounded like the mic wasn't working. Go to anything you can. Expose yourself to everything. Like this guy. This happens to be the mayor of Portland, Oregon. He was the mayor up until that day. He continued as mayor. He was trying to make a point to expose yourself to art in Portland. Now, in addition to exposing yourself to stuff, you also want to observe. Observing is part of filling your mind with the information, the grist for your mill. So let me do a test here. How many have been to Starbucks this week? Okay, probably a thousand and one times. When you walked out, there was an important sign over the door. Can anyone tell me what that sign was? Raise your hand. Yes. Open, yes. Uh, another sign? Exit. How about, how about, how about, I don't think the mic is working. It's from over here. Okay, how about this sign? This door to remain unlocked during business hours, okay? You've walked through that a thousand times, okay? And you've not noticed it. I borrowed one. <laughs> every single 7-Eleven, every single room, maybe even this building, look on the way out. My daughters have gone crazy with this. Every time they walk out of anything, they're looking for this sign. I've walked under this 10,000 times at Starbucks. That's why my hands are shaking, okay? And did not notice it. So the point is to notice things. The other thing to think about is our current education system has been focused on this. This is your brain, okay? And it has been focused on filling your brain with data. Filling, filling, filling. 
My TED talk in Sedona last year was talking about this filling of the brain is important, but, and it was set up to train factory workers 150 years ago for the Industrial Revolution. They wanted factory workers to know reading, writing, and arithmetic. They said to the students, line up, sit down, and shut up. They did not teach creativity. So what's changing now in the education system, and what I'm going to show you today is how to do this with your brain. This is squeezing the brain. It's not an art project. This represents putting humans on the moon. This represents the polio vaccine. This represents the invention of the steam engine. This represents what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about how to squeeze your brain for new information and new ideas. Now, part of the process today, we're going to 4.30, is that right? And we're going to break at what time? 3.30 getting thirsty so whoops sorry about that what I just did is I overflowed my glass I poured it out topped it off I learned this from a Buddhist monk when you're learning something new he said you need to empty your glass so that you can receive the new information so I'd like you to erase what you know about creativity so you can receive this new information. How many here feel they are creative? Okay, whoever doesn't have their hand off, up, that is a wrong answer. Every one of you is creative. Everyone is born creative. Picasso said, everyone is born creative. The trick is to remain creative. And what I do for a living, my current business, is I travel around the country, as she said, like Johnny Appleseed, putting creativity back in corporate employees putting corporate people back to being creative so they're not effing boring anymore. That's my job. That's what I do for a living. And by the way, who's heard of Johnny Appleseed? Do you know this little fact? He wasn't selling apples for eating. He was selling apples to make hard cider. So he was spreading alcoholism, but he got famous for it. All right, first, first example of a creativity problem. I mentioned this relates to the Titanic. My little connection between the initials on here being the initials for a person. I looked at it differently. Scholars say if the captain of the Titanic had taken a creativity class like this one, Maybe he would have seen the icebergs as a floating barge onto which he could have unloaded the passengers. A human in 40 degree water, they last 10 minutes, boom, they're dead. A human can stand on an iceberg for a week. That's the power of creativity. The next day, the rescue ships showed up, and the thousand people were dead. If he had taken the foe and turned it into a friend, looked at it as a friend, could have unloaded everybody on one of those icebergs. It's all about looking at things in a different way. Another example, World War II, captain of a destroyer during the Normandy invasion of France, was torpedoed. Ship blew up, he had 400 men trapped underneath. He was sinking quick, going down. Anybody think of what he could do similar to this? Any ideas? I'm saying his ship was sinking, what could he do to save his crew? What? Go, go as part of it. He could have driven up on the beach. And that's what he did. A ship captain, a Navy officer, is not trained to drive his ship up on the beach. Does not compute, is not part of the training. 
That is creativity. He saw his boat as an all-terrain vehicle. He drove it right up under the shore, saved everybody. The ship did not sink. It was grounded. That creativity saved everyone. This is an example of observation. How many have been irritated by their spouse's whining tea kettle? Let me put two hands up for that one. <laughs> James Watt looked at it and said, hey, look at that. Flapper. Look at that thing flap. It's moving. Let's harness it to the wheels of industry. And he invented the steam engine based on observation. All right, we're going to do an example. One sheet of paper at each table. If you're off to the side, you can stand up and watch what we're going to do here. This is called mind mapping. How many have heard of mind mapping? Okay, Vivian said she's mentioned it. We're going to do an example. The example relates to an incident a couple years ago. Okay, United Airlines abused a passenger. Do you remember that incident? Many people say, which one? <laughs> this was the one where the guy was seated and security came in and dragged him off the plane. Okay, man was seated. Imagine the last time you were flying, you're seated, you're seat belted in, security drags you off the plane. Wouldn't that be a big surprise? So I wrote a piece, an op-ed in the Los Angeles Times, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Now, as an entrepreneur, you're not always writing pieces for the LA Times, but you're always communicating. Every time you turn around, you're communicating and you're selling. So this is a tool for you to do that. So everyone should have a piece of paper. Someone, everyone, take a, a pen. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the blank sheet of paper. And I want you to do this. OK? One paper per table in the back. If you, do you have paper in the back? OK? So every group should have a blank sheet of paper. I want in the center, I want this. United Airlines. OK? Now work with me. You ready to go? This is generating ideas. We're finally into it. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of United Airlines? I thought of luggage. Okay? Now, this is also called prompted brainstorming because one idea leads to another. From luggage, I thought of tags. Then I thought of lost. All right? So I want you, as your groups, to keep going. I want you to come up with ideas related to United Airlines, all right? And then I want you to expand them. Go. Going to give you a few minutes to do this, and I'm going to call on you. All right, got the idea. Let's go. Give me some. This team right here, give me one of yours. Uh, passenger. Passengers. First class, oh, slow down. Passenger. So we got a passenger. This team, give me something. Flight. Flight. Look at this. Good. This team, give me one of your words. Oh, um, coffee? Coffee. Yes. Right here. Worldwide travel. Good. Worldwide travel. Coffee. Excellent. Yeah. Safety. Safety. Next team. Uh, expensive food. Expensive food. No kidding. No kidding. No. I live expensive food. <laughs> yes. Over here. Airplanes, right here? Um, tracking delays. Tracking delay. Yes, delays, indeed. Right there. Entertainment, Entertainment here. Jet propulsion. Jet propulsion, right there. Uh, right back here. Uh, cramped. cramped. Limited space, anonymous. Did I miss anybody's paper? Vacation? Yeah, right there. Give me one. Hammock. What'd you have? Hammock. 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 Yeah. That's how ships used to sleep you. It eliminated the rocking of the boat. Yes. Lounges. Lounges. Over here, there's one. Filing with my siblings to put next to the window. Windows, yes. Bad reputation. Bad reputation. Let me show you what happens when I do this with accountants. 
when I do this with accountants this is all I get right here and then they're stuck <laughs> that's the only thing they can do you guys are on fire these are I walked around very impressed I'm serious about the accountants and attorneys okay they just can't go past that first circle here's what I did I thought of flying okay I heard that flying and then flying I went to flying houses flying houses a robot would say does not compute so this is where we have advantage over robots and AI they would never get to here somebody give me what give me an idea off of house flying house shingles, shingles another one jetsons. yeah jetsons good another one how about that movie what was the movie the house had the balloons on it up, up. good up yes here's another one the Wizard of Oz right flying house and then give me some ideas off of Wizard of Oz Dorothy what else Lion. Lion. Yep. <laughs> Lion, Scarecrow, and Dorothy. That's what LSD stands for. Lion, Scarecrow, and Dorothy. Another one. Kansas City. Kansas City. One more. Wow. You're Good. And how, how come nobody mentioned the wizard? How about the Wicked Witch? So here is my LA Times pitch. I said to the LA Times editor he was like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz he was just trying to get home and the United Airlines policy was like the Wicked Witch he said to me what do you do for a living so I teach creativity that was the article in the LA Times now I want you to try another one and I want to give you some instruction here in team creativity this is a big no-no somebody says hey let's make an iPhone and the response in the room is but that'll cost a lot of money but we don't have the technology don't ever let this word but come up in a team problem-solving event make sense yeah. because this is what happens create an iPhone but it will cost too much this is the language to use in a team as an entrepreneur when you're leading your group to generate ideas you say and because and is a signal to go 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 let's create an iPhone and let's do it in different colors now we're going to do another one this problem is how to get more water for San Francisco so in the center go to a clean piece of paper I want you to practice what I'm preaching we're going to go to a clean paper this is one paper per group okay don't do it individually do it with the team because we're in a practice now I want one person to start with an idea drill a well and when that person says their idea the other the next person says and catch rainwater see if you can go through this around your whole group without using the word but try it go right one person starts they come up with an idea the next person says and all right let's break right here give me one of yours what is it pure drinkable yeah oh nice what was your subject good that's good I like that that's thinking out of the box thinking out of the dance floor what do you have uh, desal good right here 
Cloud, desalination, the, the payoff, would you have salt to sell to people? Right here. Condensation. Condensation, good, here. Um, we told it, yeah, quick, um, we did else, What'd you do? Right. Bird house. Build a house. Build a house, okay, yeah, right here. Iceberg. Iceberg. <laughs> do you remember Build-A-Bear? That's yeah. what my daughter used to do. I should have oh, taken you know them to. What? Plumbing. Uh, plumbing. Figure out how, plum figure out how to do clean plumbing that, in the house. That, does, that ties into the water, right here. Uh, water sheds. Water sheds, right here. Excellent, right there. You have one? What is it? Good, right here? Good. So how did that feel? Using the word and. And. Now here's another. Does that make sense? So but, there's two things bad, two things with but. By the way, this will work with your girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse when they're talking to you. If they're coming up with ideas for what to do this weekend, you say, but I don't want to go skydiving. <laughs> but I don't want to go skydiving tandem with a shark attached to me. If you say, and we could have sushi after we skydive with the shark, it might bring <laughs> more ideas. But has this effect. But makes a couple things. It sounds like you didn't hear the person, because you're already going on to your idea you're saying but you know it's like this putting up a hand like a cop stopping you and it has the effect of stopping any forward motion or ideas when you say and it adds to what they have said and it recognizes what they've said skydiving tandem with the shark and we could have sushi promotes more ideas from them now here's another way so when you're in a team meeting trying to generate ideas you can say and often it happens this way hey the CEO and executive staff are meeting and they say the VP of finance says hey let's pay our workers twice oh the finance VP would never say that let me try again <laughs> The sales VP would say, let's pay our workers twice as much, give them more time off, bring dogs to work, free food for dogs and the humans. This sounds like Google, doesn't it? Yeah. But when you talk like this, there's a better way. The better way is to say, I'm just brainstorming here. Because when you reel off this kind of list, hey, let's do this, it sounds like you're a dictator. You're dictating things to do. But when you say, I'm just brainstorming, it says you're open to hearing their feedback. So, honey, I'm just brainstorming this weekend, but do you want to fly my airplane with me? I'm just brainstorming. Katrina's only had two crashes. Do you want to fly in her airplane? The term brainstorming signals that you're looking for ideas. You're not dictating ideas. Important to think about the wording. It has a big impact. How you say things. If you're a leader and you've got somebody yelling at you or complaining, a good response. Anyone have an idea if you had an employee yelling at you? I'm getting too much work dumped on me. Anybody have a possible response to that? <coughs> yes? Keep it in a volume lower than that person and calmer. Yes, that's, are you in HR, human resources? <laughs> <laughs> or, did someone else have something? Yes? I'm sorry, did you yell at Yeah, excellent. Another one is, I understand. Let's work it out. Let's work it out. There was a TV show called Two and a Half Men. Anyone ever see that? Charlie Sheen was the star. He was always getting in trouble. He was always offending everyone. He had a dozen women that hated him. Everyone hated him. One day, he had a dream to say two words to every response, everything that someone said to him. He said two words, I understand. I understand. Those 12 women, they all wanted to sleep with him. At the same time, 
Everybody that hated him loved him because he said those two words, I understand. Very important. You have to be sincere about it, that you are listening, you've heard what they've said, and I understand. Here's another one. If your wife, girlfriend, child says something to you, starts to say something, and then they say, oh, never mind. You better mind like you never have in your entire life. Because there's something important. You just heard about a tip of an iceberg. And there is something important there. My daughter said to me, oh, uh, something about the bathtub. Never mind. I said, Katrina, what, what is it? Well, I turned it on. And I had the drain stopped, and I forgot until about four hours later. So then I took a bath in the entire bathroom. It was filled to the top. So I needed to know that to call the plumber. So very important language. You hear, never mind. Be sure you mind. We're going to do another mind mapping exercise. Now we're in, this is advanced mind mapping. So each team. Get out a blank sheet of paper, blank sheet of white paper, one piece of paper per team. What we're going to do, we're going to use mind mapping to sell ice coolers to Eskimos. <laughs> now here's the funny thing about this one. Okay. When we finish, you're going to say to me, how can an Eskimo live without an ice cooler? Because we are going to find four reasons that are so good. You're going to wonder how they survive in 50 degree below weather on a dog sled with no ice cooler. It's going to be that good. And this will show you the power of mind mapping. And it will show you the power of finding legitimate, we're not selling used cars here, we're selling ice coolers. Legitimate, we're going to have four important legitimate reasons that an Eskimo will need to buy an ice cooler. We're going to do it in two steps. What you're going to do on this first page is I want you to write the word Eskimo on the center. So every group should have one piece of paper and one circle in the center. Eskimos. By the way, when I did this in my TED talk, I got a complaint or two that Eskimo wasn't politically correct. Whoa. I see you concur. So I tried to solve it. I said Inuit. And then everyone said, but they make TurboTax. <laughs> so it's hard to fight the popular vernacular. And by the way, my favorite book when I was in college was The Scoliosis Man of Notre Dame, also known as The Hunchback of Notre Dame. See how sometimes you can't fight the vernacular? So I'm going to use Eskimos, and I want you to also. You can use Inuit if you want, but we're not doing TurboTax. And I want you to start writing ideas in your teams, things that are related to Eskimos. My first thing is snow, go. Write your first circles, then expand them. So remember, remember this. When you draw a circle, expand it. See, I went from Eskimos to snow, then I expanded snow, things that are related to snow, white, Ice, cold. Expand your expansions. So you're prompting your ideas. This is totally more, this is brainstorming on steroids because you're getting prompts. Snow prompts the other ideas. And then keep expanding. All right, it's looking great. Now, so 
This is a little different. We're going to do, this is a double mind map. Put this aside. We're going to come back to it. I want you to do another one. Go to another blank sheet of paper. This time, in the center, I want you to write ice cooler. And I want you to remember, when you expand, I want you to expand the other circles. Ice cooler, red. Insulates. Keep expanding. It should look like a big giant spider web. Okay. It should look like a big giant mess. Here's one time where a mess is a good sign. Go, expand, ice cooler. As many ideas as you can. All right, let's come back together. What I have seen is amazing. This ice cooler one, you filled pretty much the entire paper. Very good. That's what you want. So the rule on my mapping, no rules. You just go. It's like a Rorschach test. It's just whatever comes to mind, and you're doing it. Let your hair down. Forget any kind of editing. Just go, go, go. And that's what I see on every single paper. Let's do some. So let's start with the ice cooler. Right here. Give me a, a word. Uh, beer. Beer. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Eskimos are always thinking about that. Uh, right here. Pa what is it? Party. Party. Yes, another Eskimo thought right here. Cheap and affordable. Cheap and affordable right here. Fish. Put a niche there. Hang on, why did you say fish? They eat a lot. Eskimo food, excellent. Right back there with the glasses. You have glasses? Okay, because I was thinking maybe I need glasses. <laughs> Give me one. Travel, right here. Storage. Storage. All right, let me catch up with you. So we got travel, storage, right there. Luggage. Luggage, yes, that ties back into the airlines. I like that connection, yes. Uh, USB, uh, USB charger? USB charger, yeah. It's got, a, it's got a solar cell on it. That's an idea. Hey, there's a product idea. Ice cooler with solar panel for charging right here. So you really are an entrepreneur. Insulation. Solar charger. Who did I miss? Back there. Furniture, chair, table. Very good. Furniture, table, chair. Good. Who did I miss? Right there. A stove. Right here. What is it? Baked for hunting. Notice, I don't judge any of these. This is a crucial point. When you're trying to get ideas, suspend judgment. Every idea is good. I want harebrained wild ideas. I want some Fruit Loop action here. Yes? A blender for margaritas? That's another good one. Yes? Climate change. Right here. Climate change. Climate change. Yeah. The one with the hand up. Not freezing water? Not freezing water, yes. Portable, you can take everywhere. Yes, right here. Uh, water re resistance. Good, right there. <laughs> Holiday. Good. Yes. Uh, emergency bowl for a baby. Good. So, you kidding it. Go, one more. <coughs> Good. Now, Linus Paulding. Who's heard of Linus Paulding? He won two Nobel Prizes. Not one. He won two. He won for chemistry, and he won the Nobel Peace Prize. Did you hear about the two Nobel Peace Prize winners who are at a dinner? Yeah, they got in a big fight. They had to call the police. He said, the more ideas you have, the more chance you have of having a good idea. So, when you're generating ideas, does that make sense? You want to go for as many as you can, because then... You're casting your net wide. There's more chance of catching a tuna fish instead of a minnow. The more ideas, the more fish, the more chance. Excellent work. Now, let's go to your other sheet. Let's go to the Inuit. Eskimo. Get, go to that sheet. Does everyone have that sheet in front of them? 
Right here, one of your Eskimo ideas. Snow. Right here. Community. Well, hang on. What, what is yours? Community. Co Community. Community, yes. Safe places. Safe places. Okay, hang on. Community. Safe places, right here. Ice packing for igloos. Ice packing for igloos, right here. What is it? Fur. It's bad news for polar bears, by the way. <laughs> is that an Eskimo? Once fur. Yes. With the hand on your head. Skiing. Skiing. Excellent. Right there. Fishing. Fishing. All right. This is amazing. I've done this for 10 years. I haven't seen this kind of output from a group, but I've never taught an entrepreneurial group. So this is good. Yes. What is it? Frozen peas. Frozen peas. Very good. Yes. Another one. Yes. Oil. 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 Yes. I love it. I love every idea. Because I said the more ideas the better. Yes. Frostbite. Frostbite. Yes. Ice hotels. Ice hotels. Yes. Yes. Dog sled. Uh, igloo. igloo. What is it? The porn. Yes. Another one. No yes. Here. Yes. Yes. Tourism. Back to you. Back to you. Back to you. <laughs> it's called working the crowd. All right, now we've got two mind maps. Here is what mine looked like when I did my talk in Sedona. This is going to look familiar. You had a lot of these. I heard a lot of these. All right? So Eskimos on one side, put them up next to each other. Put your Eskimo paper next to your ice cooler paper. Put them next to each other. If they're on the same page, that's fine. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to look for connections. Wine. Cold butt. That's not really a good use for an ice cooler. That doesn't help. Wine doesn't keep your butt cold, doesn't solve the problem. But look at this one. Smelly food. Somebody mentioned fish. I heard it a couple times. An ice cooler is like a Ziploc bag. It seals in the smell. Why would that be good? For polar bears. Polar bears, exactly. <laughs> so if an Eskimo puts their food into this ice cooler, then the Eskimo has less chance of becoming dinner for the polar bear. Here's another match. <clears throat> Frozen food is a big deal. Insulation. The ice cooler can insulate their food so it doesn't freeze. It keeps the food from freezing. The water, insulation again. See how I'm, I'm, I'm connecting things. Your brain is going a million miles an hour, connecting, connecting, connecting. And then this is the one time where you're making a judgment. You're making a judgment here. Generating ideas is called divergent thinking. You're diverging. You're going crazy. This is converging on a solution. You have all these ideas. Now you're looking for a solution. Cold butt. An ice cooler is like a box or a chair. Someone said, who said chair furniture? Yes, yes. So an ice cooler can keep your butt from freezing. This is how we find solutions for the Eskimo. We're matching up chair and cold butt. We're matching up. Seals and the smells and polar bears. See the power here? The conclusion is we've now got four solid reasons we've come up with. Is this making sense? Eskimos need ice coolers to keep their food from freezing, to keep their water from freezing out there in that 50 below temperature with their dog sled, to keep their butt from freezing, and to keep them from becoming dinner for a polar bear that might be tracking the smell. Break time. Is that okay?
Can we break now? <laughs> Watch out for the polar bears. Back in 10 minutes. So at 340, 340, 340, we will resume. All right, let's come back together. So we're going to do another advanced mind mapping. We are going to mind map mind mapping. I used this to generate a new type of mind mapping. And I'm going to have you help me get a clean white sheet of paper in the middle, write the word mind mapping. Okay, here's my start. Mind mapping. Ideas. Ideas go to crazy. Lots. Funny. Go for it. Expand this idea, mind mapping. Expand it. So the middle of the paper, blank paper, has the word mind mapping. I want you to expand the idea of mind mapping. Anything goes. Whatever comes to mind, it's like a Rorschach test. Look at that word mind mapping. What comes to your mind? Draw a spoke on the wheel, make a circle, then expand that. Expand, expand, expand. We are now mind mapping, mind mapping. Super advanced. We're trying to find new techniques to generate ideas. So we're starting with mind mapping, and we're coming up with new ways to make ideas. All right, let's, let's come together. I want to see what your ideas are. <clears throat> Right here, give me one of your ideas. Um, road. road? Good. Over here? Teamwork. Teamwork. Right here. Growth. Growth. Back there. Uh, visioning. What is that? Visioning. visioning. Solutions. Solutions. So we got vision. Very good. Visioning. Who said visioning? Yeah, okay. Solutions. In the red, in the back. Neurons. Neurons, yeah. What color are you? Okay. What was your red? What is it? Exploring. All right, exploring. Over there. Creativity. Yes. Green color. What is it? Green. Green. Good. Right here. Um, R&D. Yes. Brainstorming. Brainstorming. These are excellent. So when you started this, you probably thought, what are we going to have? And you, every one of you has got a full paper right now. Back there. What is it? Good. Another one. Good. Another one. Good. Another one. Good. One more. What? Good. All good. Now, when I did this, I also had this word. Who came up with visioning? Raise your hands. That table? These are all excellent. Very well done. So when you, when you do one of these, then you stand back, and now it's judgment day. 
you're looking for something you can use. And I recommend you do a judgment day right then, and then you wait a couple hours. Go to lunch, go to the gym, work out, even the next day. Look at it again. So in my case, I didn't see anything that worked for my business of generating ideas until the next day. I had this exact word, visioning. And it gave me this idea, visual mind mapping. So I Googled it, had not been done, not going to patent it. And I'm sure I'm not the first to think of it. Here's how it works. Remember the United Airlines passenger that got dragged? Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz? Well, it's going to get even better. We're going to do visual mind mapping works like this. Take a white blank. Everyone have a white paper. Start with a new blank piece of paper. We're going to do another one different this time. We're going to draw a picture of the security guard dragging the passenger off the plane. This is visual. We're not using words this time, we're using pictures. So what I'm going to ask you to do is generate pictures. Things, in this case, for instance, dragging um, your, your children to school. Okay? Dragging the carpet out of the house. Dragging out garbage. garbage. That's it. Go for it. But... No, do not use words, do pictures, sketches. Hey, we're not being Picasso here. We're just getting ideas. Do not write words. I want you to do visual. Because when you do visual, like dragging out the garbage, you think of other things, dragging out the garden hose. I wrote words just to speed it up. I want you to do sketches. I don't want to see any words. I want to see sketches, and they should look crappy, because this is not an art project. This is an idea project. The crappier the sketch, and by the way, I set the bar pretty low for crappy sketches. Sketch, sketch, sketch. Good, excellent. Wow, Michelangelo over here. Sketches, nice. I do not want Michelangelo. I do not want Da Vinci. I just want sketches. Very good. Now, I'm going to ask for sketch, I don't want you to give me the sketch. Just tell me what the sketch is. We're going to have to re switch back to words now. Tell me what you got for an image right here. Um, suitcase. A suitcase being dragged right here. A seatbelt. Seat Excellent. Right there. Money. Money being dragged. Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> For United Airlines, a lot of money got dragged. My brother said after the lawsuit, this guy could have bought United Airlines. That's how much he got. By the way, that LA Times piece I wrote, his daughters saw it and contacted me. They said I was the first one to say he was doing a good thing instead of a bad thing. And it's going to get even better in a minute. We're going to do this a little differently. One more right there. Someone walking their dog. Excellent. Yes. A, book. a what? Book. A book getting dragged over here. I saw a hand. Oh, parachute. Parachute. Yes. I and I glue back to the Eskimos. Good. Let's call it a callback in comedy. When you're writing comedy, refer back to something that's a callback. Yes. A prison. A prison. Another one. Yes. Shopping, Shopping bags. Prison, yeah, one more. Set up here? Oh, right. Good, over here? Therapy session. Therapy session. A, gun? a gun. 
All of these, look. Drag racing. Drag racing. Okay. Here, these are all excellent. These all work. This is what I wanted to see from you. Very good work. I had one more thing come to mind. I saw in the 60s civil rights protesters being dragged. Who was dragged off the bus? Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. I saw Rosa Parks getting dragged. I saw Martin Luther King's team getting dragged out of restaurants. Then I wrote a piece for the San Francisco Chronicle. It was titled, He Was Doing Civil Disobedience. Thomas Jefferson wrote, if a law is unjust, it's your job to break the law. So what he was doing was like what the civil rights protesters were doing, the same thing. Does that make sense? You see how it works differently? I could not got to that. You could not have gotten to all of these great ideas if you worked it as text. Because you worked it as image, visual mind mapping, you got different ideas, totally different. So now you have two tools. You have conventional mind mapping, you have visual mind mapping. Let me give you another tool. This tool is called attribute listing. And we're going to do it <coughs> for duct tape. You are the CEO now of a duct tape company. What you're going for is more types of duct tape. Or you're an entrepreneur trying to start a new business in the duct tape industry. Here's how it works. Another blank sheet of paper. I know you're getting tired but you're doing great, doing an awesome job. Here's what we're going to do. We're going for ideas, new ideas for new types of duct tape. This is called attribute listing. You take attributes. In this case, we're going to take the color of the duct tape, and we're going to have different colors. We're going to take the width. You can have a one inch duct tape. You can have a four inch. What your mission, should you accept it? In five seconds, this microphone will self destruct. <laughs> is to come up with more attributes. See what else you can come up with, then fill them in. So maybe stickiness, the amount of stickiness, sticky, less sticky, medium sticky, the width, maybe a quarter inch, maybe nine feet. Colors, rainbow, fill this table in. Everyone should be making this table and filling it in now. Go for it. Totally different. We are not mind mapping anymore. We are not in Kansas anymore. We are attribute listing. We're doing, yes, yeah, do these as a group. The point of this whole thing is generating ideas as a group, this is team idea generation. You're playing off each other. Watch how it happens. One person has an idea, you say and. You add to the idea. Then they say and, they add to the idea. You're building on top of each other. All right, let's come back together. What I'm gonna ask for first are column headings. Give me a column heading. Top, what's at the top? Material. material, the type. Give me some of your entry. What types of material? <laughs> Excellent. Good. Metal. Give, metal, yeah. Give me another heading right here. What is it? Effectiveness. What did you put in your column? Yeah, heavy duty, like gut, like. Gorilla tape, yes. Uh, design. Your heading is design? Yeah. Give me some, some things you filled in. Like sports logo. Uh, wow. Company logo. Good. Um, like, uh, like your favorite scenic logo. You know. Yeah, like City, of, City, of City College of San Francisco yeah. logo. Right. Yes, right here. <laughs> Yo, hang on, this one? Brand. What is it? Brands. So your column is brands. Give me some entries. Uh, we have 3M, Scott, Gus, uh, Staples, Jenny, and 
Excellent. Next table, what'd you have? Excellent. I love the zebra. Keep going. Oh, the sticky stuff, that's also called adhesion. 100%, 80%, 60%, 40%. We just went down the number, 80 and 40, 20 pounds adhesion. Excellent. So we, yeah, so hang on. That's good. So when he said adhesion, he invented masking tape. Low adhesion. This team, what'd you get? Give me a column. I'm a junior. Durability. Durability. Like metal tape. You've invented the metal tape version. Give me another column. Uh, stickiness. Stickiness. That was his. Good. Yeah. He's got that patented. You can't use it. One more. We got conductivity, but we didn't fill out. Good. Right here. Material. The type of material. Give me your entries in your column. Like uh, plastic, paper, and uh, glass. Good. This team. Biodegradable. What do you have? Biodegradable. Good. And is that's a type. Give me a column now. One of your columns. Reusable. Reusable. Good. Back there. Give me a column. Texture. Nice. Sandpapery. What else do you have in that column? Smooth, rubbery. Excellent. Right here in the red. Your team. Handcuffs. <laughs> nice. Functional. Right here. What do you guys have? Oh, nice. Right here. Right here. Good. Those are good. Give me a column. Fluorescence. Fluorescence. That is. Did I miss anybody? Right here. Give me a column. Heat resistance, nice. Low, medium, high. It's kind of like uh, Goldilocks and the Three Little Bears. Hot, medium, cold. Right here. Um, waterproof and weight capacity. Wow, weight capacity, nice. Nice. Is it making sense? You see this? So that's what I meant. That balance thing between work and life, there's always going to be an opportunity. Spend the time with the kids, not your business. Balance it because there's always, see, this generated so many ideas. Any single one of these could have been pursued. This has been pursued. Orange tape, someone went with the colors. There's always going to be a problem. There's always going to be a customer. Now, when you're creating, you do have to think about the customer this way. And this is called creating with empathy and I want to make you feel this idea there's a lot of ways to teach you can teach with showing pictures words text and feeling something is the strongest way to learn so I want everyone to cross your arms everybody should have their arms crossed okay now Quickly, cross your arms the other way. Go. Whoa. Whoa, did that ever feel weird? So the point is, some people cross one way, and other people cross the other way. So if you're designing an arm crossing product, you're going to need to have two versions, one way and the other way. The important point is to know when you're designing something or creating something people aren't going to be like you they're different and you have to take that into account that's why user testing very important one is at apple we would test the software on people we would videotape them often they were cursing screaming at the software flipping it off we still do that today right well like anybody here use photo crap i mean photoshop or in, in decent design, uh, in design. I use them and they're very hard. In fact, the lack of creativity can cause deaths. The lack of empathy can cause death. It killed many pilots in World War II. What happened was the guy that designed 
the controls of the B-17, put the lever, the red lever that lowered the landing gear next to the red lever that lowered the flaps. So the pilot would come in and say to the co-pilot, turn the red lever. And the co-pilot didn't know, the co-pilot was thinking, oh, the red lever, this red lever, it's the wrong red lever. It's putting down the flaps, it wasn't putting down the landing gear, so boom! Many planes came in with a big bang and it killed a lot of pilots and they blamed it on the pilots. Oh, the guy didn't put down his landing gear. He didn't put down his landing gear because he was doing what he was told. They were flipping the red lever. This has gotten so bad that there is a nuclear power plant, I won't name it, but there are th but it's within three miles of an island where the nuclear controls were so confusing they put beer keg handles on them to make it clear. And the flying thing is a big deal to me because I'm a pilot. I'm not a risky pilot, I mean I'm a kind of ordinary pilot. I went out last week and flying at 3,000 feet being very calm and very careful and the door popped open at 120 mile an hour. Didn't know what was going on, I just felt this 120 mile an hour wind hitting me in the face and I saw the door so I reached over to close the door and when I did that I pushed on the left rudder, it flipped the plane upside down yeah, and then I fell out but I grabbed the leading edge of the wing and I worked my way back in and I'm here to teach you today. <laughs> Anybody want to fly with me this weekend? <laughs> right, so the next thing we're going to look at, this is called lateral thinking. How many drove a car here today? All right. Some of you aren't going to be hitting on all six cylinders. This is a piston from someone's car. I'll put it back afterwards. <laughs> Lateral thinking is what made the auto industry possible. So in the beginning, they would make pistons that would go into these holes Vivian, I think I hit the off button on this. <clears throat> I think every clicker that I've ever used in my whole life has malfunctioned. Maybe someone needs to design a new one. <laughs> or put uh, beer keg handles on it. <laughs> if they had beer keg handles. The pistons go up and down in a hole. Can you help me? Can you come up and help me? So the pistons go up and down. This is where I got the title for the talk today, where I'm saying you want to be hitting an all cylinders, can you take this hand, and this goes up, okay. can you hold the bottom now, yeah. and at the top what happens is there's a spark <laughs> and the piston comes down and the wheels go round and round, thank you. Now what happened was very creative people, very inventive, can you take it to the next slide? There you go. Great. Okay. And I can just use my, my mouse. So these pistons fit into the holes. This is what they did. Tremendous innovation and creativity. All these machines to precisely, precisely mill and machine and grind these to fit right into the hole because if there's any leakage that explosion goes around the piston and it doesn't push down. The gas exploding goes around. So what they did was millions of patents, great thinking, design, 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 big machines as big as this building, as big as a house. But part of the problem was a lot of them when they came out of casting were too small. And then this guy said, Let's make them all small and we'll fill in the gap with a ring, a piston ring. 
If they kept going with designing the machines to mill and grind these, cars would still be costing $200,000. But this guy, he says, forget that, make them too small. And all these people are going, you're crazy, you're nuts. And he says, yes, this is the way. Use a ring, a piston ring, to fill the space. You might have heard of this guy. His name was Henry Ford. 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 That's what made the auto. There were 30 or 40 automakers then. His innovation, his lateral move, his lateral idea. The lateral idea is everyone's digging here for better fitting grinding pistons. He was digging a different hole. So when you're trying to solve a problem, think of a different way. Totally unrelated. Let's try one of these lateral thinking examples. We're going to do, go to a, a blank sheet of paper. We're going to do a mind map on whitening teeth. My favorite, everyone have whitening strips? You know what whitening strips are for your teeth? So I like to put those on and then I drink a cup of black coffee and I watch them fight it out. <laughs> What we're going to do is come up with ideas, do a mind map on this one. Ideas for making your teeth more white. In the center of the paper, you can do whatever you want. If you want to do a lateral thinking type thing, coming off with really radically different ideas, you want to do an attribute listing, do what you want, but give me ideas for how to whiten teeth. Whiten Teeth. Go. Generate as many ideas. Anything. Anything goes. That's the rule on this mind mapping. That's the rule in attribute listing. That's the rule in lateral thinking. Anything goes. All right. Let's stop. Give me one. DNA modification. Love it. Great way to get a dinosaur, too, at the same. Two for one. Yes. Painting them, excellent. Brushing the charcoal. charcoal brushing, yes. Yes, yours. Oh, I'm too. Um, charcoal, oh. charcoal um, toothpaste and um, mouthwash. And you put shampoo because you're being creative. A shampoo that's got whitening material in it. Two for one. Peroxide. Peroxide, yes, right here. Uh, boric acid. Boric acid? Why not sulfuric acid? Yeah, back here. Yeah. Diet. diet. Change your diet. Yes. Back in the corner. Chewing gum. Chewing gum. Excellent. Chewing gum with whitening. Is that what you're thinking? Over here. Uh, we have charcoal and paint also. Charcoal paint. Any others? Yes. Baking soda right here back in the red. <laughs> Lips redder? Nice. That is an example of a lateral move. So she said, make your lips, the, the problem was how to make your teeth whiter. She said, what, all your ideas were excellent. You were over here generating ideas like crazy. They're all good. She took a, a lateral step and said, don't mess with the teeth. You see the difference? You were working the teeth and that's what I asked you to do and you did a good job. She went lateral and said, forget the teeth, forget grinding the pistons, work the lips, put red lipstick on. This is what you're thinking, right? It makes your teeth look whiter. You see that? Yes. It's what? <laughs> okay. Here's, an here's another lateral move. Watch this. Sun tanning booth. Lateral move. You see that? Don't get hooked up, focused on the problem too closely. Take a step over. Red lipstick. Take a step over, go get a suntan. Your teeth will look whiter. Now, <laughs> this is a big one. Yes. This one we're going to do now is called problem, no problem. Problem, no problem. I handed out a bunch of blue pens. They're yours to keep. I want you to mind map, brainstorm, whatever you want to do. I want you to generate reasons that pin has a cap. 
go. Why does that pin take the cap off, take it on and off? Why did they bother? So, can I borrow? This blue pin, see, look, there's a cap. Why did they make the cap? Generate your ideas. Go, go, go. Why is there a cap? What are the advantages? What is the purpose of the cap on your pin? Why? Why, why, why? Go. All right, let's go. We're going to do this, then we're going to do the bag with the candle. We are not going to light the candle on fire. Fire marshal says no, but we are going to still do the exercise. Very interesting result. Let's do pen cap. Why is there a pen cap? Go. To hang. Good. Go. Doesn't stain. Doesn't stain. Go. To pick your teeth. To pick your teeth? Yes. Here. What is it? Clip to your clothes. Clip to your clothes. Yes. Give me one. One that's different. It won't poke you. Yes, in the yellow. Think before to write. Yes, think before write. Yes. Extend the life. Extend the life. How many think extend the life? Raise your hands. How many think to keep the pen from drying out? Excellent. Yes, right here. Oh, I was agreeing to what you said. Now, give me a new one. Okay. Yeah, good one. Uh, back there. Uh, what is it? Yes, now, this is an exercise problem. Exercise and observation, remember? Looking at the iceberg as a barge to put your passengers on. Noticing the sign above Starbucks. Raise your hand if you think the pen cap is for keeping it from drying out. This is a trick question. That's why <laughs> some of you are not raising your hands this time. Look at it. Look at, hold the pin cap up. What do you see? There's holes. It's not for keeping the pin cap from drying out. So this is the power of observation. So watch my hand in my office. I'm a writer also, so I buy pens by the box full. This is what I do with my pen cap. Because I found myself all day long going on and off. You add up that time, that's a lot of time. I could be writing more words. My pen lays like this on my desk. No cap needed. Here, can I give you a pen? <laughs> no. no cap? I know that's another way to do it. So it's an example of observing. When you're dealing with a problem, asking yourself a question, observe fully and completely. Now, take, take the board. Take the white board, this one here, here's your assignment. Don't worry about the circles, ignore them. I want you to take this board, I want you to take, the content, take out the contents of the bag. You've got these items. Both bags? No, just the bag with the matches. Do not light the matches. Yes, it, yeah, thank you, that was right, hand them to me. I want you to mount the candle on the board as if you were going to light it with the matches. Do not light the matches. Fire marshal said no. This exercise done this way. You mount that candle and the matches light it. You've got, you've got candle, matches, and you've got thumbtacks. Go for it. Yeah, mount the candle vertical like I'm holding. I want to see the candle mounted this way so that you could light it with those matches. This is hard. We're advanced now. Go for it. Find a way to mount the candle. Do not look at other groups. Focus. Cannot melt, cannot light fire. No fire. I just want the candle to be vertical so that it could be lit. Find a way to mount that candle using the stuff in the bag. You have, you have a box of matches. 
No, you cannot do this. It's not a balancing act. It has to be secure. So you need to mount the candle on the face, not on the top. On the face of the board, mount the candle. It has to be vertical. The board has to be up and down. Vertical board. It cannot be on the top edge. Mount that candle. Do you mean it can't be set? They had an idea that I think is interesting. Sitting on the top? Not, no, they show them your idea. What was your idea? Works. <laughs> yeah, show yeah. me what you were thinking. <laughs> you had it, you stuck it in the bottom and then. Uh, take it, take it down. I want the others to see it. Yeah, yeah, what you did. Yeah, that like, the, to me that's valid. <laughs> yes, that is good. Yeah. All right, take it down. I want the other groups to see it. Okay, I want to see some answers. Wow. All right, super. This is very good output. I have never seen these other ideas. All right, put your ideas up. So the people I said, take it down, put it back up, put it back up. This is a very hard problem. I'm not giving you much time. All right, so everybody stop. Look at group number one. Hold it up. Hold your, look what, okay? We could light that candle. Good job. What, you're almost there, okay? Turn it around. Turn around. They're wedging it between the thumbtacks. What do you got here? Nothing. Not that's okay. This is hard. All right, they're still working. Okay, good. Another wedge. What do you got? All right, that's okay. This is a very hard one. I didn't give you much time. Another wedge. Okay, look at this one. They're hooking it. Another wedge. So I'm seeing a lot of wedge solutions. I'm not seeing yet what Bingo! We got a winner. All right. So, everybody that mounted the candle, listen up. This is the point. They saw the matchbox as a potential solution. <laughs> this is a famous example of missing, missing a solution. It's like I call it the ruby slippers. She had those ruby slippers that whole movie and didn't recognize it as a solution. This matchbox is our ruby slippers. Everyone that mounted, good job. Everyone that did not, good job because I didn't give you much time. You probably would have got here. This is the idea. The matchbox is part of the solution. One last exercise. Turn the boards over. You've got three red circles looking at you. Three red circles. Take out the knives. <clears throat> Here's what we're going for. Um, can you help me again? Can you come up? So she's going to show you. We got five minutes on this one. See that? Um, good. What I want you to do is use these knives. To build a bridge, those cups have to be in the red circles because I have to make it hard on you. It seems impossible. I'm going to give you five minutes. This is really hard. No one's ever gotten this. If you know the answer, hold it. Don't tell anybody. Yes. So you're wanting me to build a bridge from one cup to the other with the knife? Yes. Yeah. So that this little paperweight is, is positioned in the center. I want you to build a bridge to hold that paperweight. Can you tilt it toward him a little more? Like this. See that? Paperweight suspended. Build a bridge with the knives. Go for it and don't hurt anybody. But where do the cups have to be? The cups must be in the red circles.
The Cubs have to be in the red circles. It has to be up in the air. It has to be in the air, yes. Um, <laughs> do not do not stick the knife in the board. So the cups must be on the circle. Build a bridge. Build a bridge. It seems impossible. I could not figure this out. Yes, you may. If you want to. They have to be on the red circle. Yes. 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 I think so. Wait, really? It has to be in the air. You cannot be touching the board. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. The paperweight has your close. The paperweight has to be in the air. It has to be in the air. <laughs> you give up one love. <laughs> That's what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see it. You're on, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Not quite. Let me show you. So. All right, come over, look at this table carefully, do not bump. This is the answer. I saw other solutions, but this is what I was looking for. You interlock, the point of this, it seems impossible. I'm trying to show you that as entrepreneurs, you're gonna come up on problems like this that seem impossible. Keep trying, there's a solution. So when you have a problem, you don't think it can be solved, you keep going because Curtis showed you an impossible problem and it got solved. It got solved. We've got one more to do and then we're going to dismiss you. Can you look at ours? Yeah, let me come look. We have the B option. <laughs> Good. That is. Okay. There is one other group. They sliced up. They sliced up the cups. If you want to take a look at this one, why don't, you, why don't you leave it up so they can watch on the way out? Last problem. This is an example of lateral thinking. Very common problem. This is our last one. How many have, okay, let's sit down and focus. Last one and then you're dismissed. Here it goes. How many have seen the nine dot problem? The nine dot problem challenges you to connect these dots with four lines. But most people do it like this. Okay, up, up, up. One, two, three, four, five. They don't get it. They don't see it. You gotta go outside the box 
here's the way. They go out of the box. This is out of the box thinking. Okay? They come up. Boom. That's one, two, three, four lines. I did it. But anybody an idea how to do it in one line? One single line. Yes, how? You mean kind of like this? One line. You see that idea? <clears throat> that is thinking out of the box. Thank you. You're a super creative group. I hope you're more creative. Appreciate your coming today.